First Class V here, back with another GCSS Army video. And today we're going to start our 15 part series on demand analysis. So, this whole series is going to show you how to conduct a demand analysis from start to finish. If you haven't had a chance, please check out the uh, shop stock uh, series that we just completed. And this is to build on that, okay? So, the first step is to do the shop stock. So, we're going to talk about demand analysis today. Like I said, today's video is just a demand analysis overview, and then we're actually going to build into all of the individual steps on how to actually complete a demand analysis correctly so that you are the most equipped unit when it comes to your shop stock, bench stock, and can keep you in the fight. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, hit that bell for notifications for my uh, upcoming videos. So without further ado, let's jump into demand analysis. All right, so like I said, today's video is just a brief overview on uh, SSL quarterly analysis and update, okay, demand analysis. So work order management, okay, bluff, bottom line up front, okay, there are several key processes that rely on work orders for data inputs, okay, inventory management, capturing demands and man hours, accounting for major areas that rely on input from work orders. To accurately capture consumption in GCS's army, it's important to establish a manageable work order process for all of your operations. Okay, so everything you do when it comes to work orders, you need to make sure you have a process in place. So consumptions is captured through MyGo 261 movement types. Okay, so I know a lot of y'all use 201, but that's wrong. You're not going to capture uh, consumptions with a 201 movement code. You have to use a 261 movement code. So in other words, okay, you might issue material to a work order, uh, work order for it and count towards your 12 month consumption period, okay? So just a, a key tip, a good battle rhythm is to run your demand analysis in conjunction with your quarterly SSL inventory, okay? Make sure you conduct your fiscal inventory first and ensure it's accurate. All right, so regulatory guidance, all right? So following your information, can, all this, everything I'm teaching you guys can be found in AR 710-2, right? So maintenance supply policies, okay? So support maintenance faci uh, facilities are authorized a limited amount of expendable supplies and repair parts for efficient maintenance operations, such as issued from stock record account and use internal maintenance shop uh, support, right? So basically there's two types of maintenance related supplies. So we use shop stock. We use bench stock, okay? Your demand supported and your unpredictable used uh, consumables. All right, different management policies apply to each of these. So I encourage you to reach out to your uh, brigade and division to make sure that you are following their policies and procedures. And also go ahead and look in AR 710 2 and also the force comm interim on shop stock bench stock guidance. So as we know, we do this quarterly, right? So the purpose is to analyze the consumption of materials and recommend the material line retentions, deletions, or additions to apply to the unit's SSL. So there is there is logic behind this, okay? So material requirements or MRP forecasting demand analysis in Plan 2000 is based on the MRP area additions, retention, deletion ratios, and cost band that have been set in GRME, all right? So the the following is what we use uh, as ratios to establish if we can keep it on uh, sub stock, add it, delete it, so forth. Okay, so tactical army, which is our active duty. So within 12 month, you have to have six material consumptions are required to add uh, shop stock material to your SSL. If you have three or more consumptions, you're required to retain the shop stock, all right, at the unit level. If you have two or less, then that is a result of a deletion from your SSL. If you're National Guard or Reserves within a 12 month period, you need are required to have two material consumptions, all right, to keep it. You have one material uh, consumption, you retain it, and then zero, you're gonna delete it. And then for y'all, you use special, op, uh, special operation or special organizations out there, within a 12 month period, three material consumptions, you add it, two materials, you retain it, and then uh, zero consumptions, you're going to delete it. 
So here's some more business rules for you. So the transaction MRP is Ecom Bravo transaction. OK, this is used to execute uh, manually by maintenance managers or maintenance administrators or supply techs or your MAST. OK, that's what uh, what we call a short with all the, uh, the G Army EUM plus poor old stuff. So GCS Army analysis, the following MRP types in plan 2000. OK, so you have basically four different types. You got ZV, PD, ZM and ZP. If you haven't had a chance to uh, check out my video on uh, a, a uh, explanation of all four of the uh, MRP types, go ahead and do so. OK, it's in the shop stock video series. So like I said, ZV is your demand supported. These lines um, now you can you can adjust the reorder points, right? But you cannot delete a demand supported line. OK, so all that's done at the SPO level. Your PD is all your stuff that comes in regularly. Uh, any parts you order should come in as a PD uh, MRP type. Your ZM or your command ads. OK, so this is stuff that your commander wants you to add. Your ZPs is your provision or new equipment fielding. So for example, uh, my unit, we just got the new pistols to replace the M9. So according to you know regulation of what what is required, your um, all of our special stock or stock for those items were required to put a ZP for a minimum of two years. So um, the new pistols like they come with two different types of pistol grips. That second set of pistol grips needs to make sure that it's in a ZP provisional new equipment MRP type. All right. So once MRP batch type has reached the status of finish, OK, so once you run your ZCOM Bravo, then you're going to display the forecasting requirements of ZCOM 1 Delta transaction, OK? And that's again used by your maintenance managers and mats to display, uh, to display and result and export it to Microsoft work, uh, Workbook. So I'm going to show you guys how to do uh, in another video, Microsoft Excel, how to actually do the analysis part, the analyzer, all right? It's recommended where you add two columns to the workbook to capture the following. One, you're going to add a remarks column, uh, confirmation rejections or reorder points and safety points. And then you add another column for retention, deletion, calculations, OK? So when we talk in terms of who's responsible for what, so this does not all fall on your ERP clerk, OK? So as a maintenance manager, you need to be involved and you actually have some key tasks, OK? So if you're a maintenance manager or tech, all right, so you supply the maintenance uh, or the uh, Microsoft Excel workbook to the commander for approval. OK, if the commander requires changes to the workbook, changes are captured by the ERP. And then the approved Excel workbook is applied to the maintenance manager or tech and so forth. If you're the ERP, you must perform uh, any safety stock quantity uh, adjustments. So if you have, uh, let's say your reorder point set at 27 or, it's, or demand analysis saying, hey, set it at 27. And your commander's like, no, that was a one time fluke. We had all these shortages. I don't want to stock 30 of these things. So he'll be able to adjust that, OK? And that's through the Z, uh, Z, uh, ZSAF transaction. Then once they're done that, OK, so you'll do your ZA. Um, what would happen? You'll do your ZATF transaction. Then your maintenance manager, maintenance supervisor, or the ERP. Um, request the commander's approval. So everything you do, the commander needs to be signing off on. OK, keep that in mind because that's important to file it, especially for like the Amy. Um, everything needs to be filed in accordance with errors. OK, just like your shop stock uh, inventories, they're to be signed by the commander as well. All right, so here is the actual flow chart. OK, so this whole series is going to be built off this flow chart. So First thing you do is shop stock quarterly MRP for, uh, forecast demand analysis for review required. OK, that's what we're doing. So if you look here at the top of here, and if you guys want to copy this PowerPoint, just reach out to me with your email and I will happy to get this to you. And then all the documents are embedded in here for you to make it easy for you. OK, so the first step for the ERP is to run the MRP for, uh, forecasting requirement. OK, Zcom Bravo. And then from there, the ERP's going to verify completion status. OK, so, so SMX is the T code. So like I said, we're going to get further into this. Each one of these tasks is what we're going to focus on. But one key thing that I've known with the SMX, so most units, especially when they're doing their shop stock uh, inventories, they're not letting the report finish. They're running the report and they're immediately thinking, hey, it's good to go, right? 
give it some time. Make sure you go in there because you can actually go into ZMX and verify that it's actually finished. OK, so from there, this is the status of the batch code finish. Yes, so then we're going to go to our, our next step, which is display and export the MRP forecast requirement in ZCOM 1 Delta. All right, so we're going to do a, a video on that. And then I'm going to get, I'm going to show you guys how to provide the Microsoft Excel spreadsheet uh, to the maintenance manager or the tech for analysis. From there, I'm going to show you guys how to format it and, and put in an Excel spreadsheet uh, to capture the required uh, modifications, whether it be add, delete or retain. And from there, we're going to provide the Microsoft Excel spreadsheet to the commander for approval. OK. And from there, so depending on what the commander does, he can either change it or he can reject it or he can approve it, right? So we're going to, for the video series, we're going to actually go through and do the, the change portion. So we're going to apply all the changes to the commander's spreadsheet and, and we're going to capture the commander's signature. So it's important that you, you capture the commander's signature at this point, okay? And then, um, like I said, if you want this video, all the stuff is here. Just all you're going to have to do is double click and you'll be able to get into it. So um, this technical bulletin or training bulletin here is going to help you understand and format your Excel document to run the Zcom one. All right. So for step four, we're going to process the MRP forecasting requirements. OK, so we'll be in Zcom one and then we'll go down to delete material SSL adjustment safety stocks. If like I said, if there are any safety stocks that need to be adjusted, we're going to make sure that all that is complete. Then we're going to change the safety stocks to uh, ZSAF and then we're going to display and print the uh, ZATF. OK, so once everything is done, that's what we're going to do. We're going to we're going to print it and then we're going to put the final product together and have the, uh, the commander sign it and capture it. And once that's done, our shop stock quarterly MRP demand analysis is complete. All right, so as you can see, it's a lot of steps, but the more you do it, the faster you'll get it and the easier it'll get. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, language lingo, you know, all the different letters and what they mean. We're going to break down all that. We're going to step by step. So a couple uh, examples here. So like I said, if you want this, uh, PowerPoint just click on it. it's going to show you how to actually um, do your Zcom one Delta so that it captures the commander's signature all right now I'll go in in a second and I'll show you that so just to reiterate here okay the process only works if your team is disciplined so the whole point of demand analysis is to capture the consumption and see if there's a trend and make sure that your your stock is where it should be like I said by issuing Ensuring a 261 movement type versus a 201. It's very common for units to make inventory adjustments using 201. Okay. Again, this movement code will not count as a demand. So let me go back in here and I'm going to show you an example of the MRP forecast. So, all right. So this is an example on how you would do it. It's a material description, safety stock on hand, reorder point, MRP, and the, the type. ZV or ZM. And then basically all you would do is you go number of ATF line, zero balance, so forth. Okay. You're just gonna put your command signature block and you'll be able to sign it just like that. So like I said, I hope this video was helpful. Um, we're going to continue building on this. This is just a brief overview. Like I said, all these different T codes and all these different steps, we are actually going to go in and we are going to um, I'll deep dive if, that, if that's what you want to call it. All right. So um, I hope this video was helpful. Stay tuned for the upcoming videos in this section. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that bell. And like I said, if you have any ideas or some stuff you want to learn, or if you have knowledge you want to share with, with me or anyone else in the group, leave the comments down below. OK, so like I said, there's more than one way and more more than one way to interpret stuff in GCS's arm. OK, there's a lot of there's a lot of what ifs and, and so forth. So like I said, the more knowledge we can share, the better. That's the whole point of this channel. Um, so without further ado, y'all go ordinance.